all these cute dogs that are all around. And, um, first of all, I want to thank everyone for checking the weather report and seeing that despite it being cloudy, it's not raining. So I think a lot of folks just assumed it was going to rain and I don't think it's going to, especially with all these rainbows out. <laughs> I want to thank Staples for donating the water and for their support of the organization. I want to thank RentAsburyPark.com for their presenting sponsorship. I want to thank PNC Bank for their continued support of our organization. I want to thank Local City Council, Amy, Yvonne, and um, Eileen. Could I? No. Yes? Oh, yeah, here, Amy's here. I think the other ones had to run to a ribbon cutting. They're opening up a. Piggly Wiggly. Piggly Wiggly? Is that what they're no. Oh, no. They're opening up an animal boutique, a dog and cat boutique. Oh. Which, uh, for those of you who have lived in Asbury Park for more than 10 years, it shows how much this town is changing. That's Catsbury Park. If the Board of Garden State Equality could please join me up here at the microphone, and Ben, if you want to join as well, you can. This is Ben Fisher. He's our um, health and wellness coordinator. And to kick off this event, we want to invite up Janet Villas, who's going to sing the national anthem. Uh, good morning. Please feel free to sing along with me. <clears throat> oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hail At the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red flare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does the Star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. I'd now like to welcome up to, wasn't that beautiful? Yeah. Our community is so talented. I'd now like to welcome up to the mic microphone our board chair of our 501c4, <laughs> Luann Peter Paul. So standing with me is the board chair of the C3, Franklin Cumberbatch. And we have, uh, here's the message we want to give. This is the week that we did um, the Orlando Pulse Memorial. And what that symbolized to all of us is the fact that we are a community, we are a family, and we have each other's back. So what Franklin and I would like each one of you to do is to pick out somebody in the crowd that you don't know and go up to them, look them in the eye, and say, I have your back. If you could all just please do that right now. I have your back. And thank you guys all for coming out, and thank you for always supporting Garden State Equality and our mission to continue to educate and to fight for the rights of the LGBT community. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Luann and Franklin. I'd now like to welcome up United States Congressman Frank Pallone. Thank you, Christian. We got your back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I, I appreciate a number of people said something like that when I came up. And, you know, Chris, they were referencing what happened with the attack on the Republican members of Congressmen at the baseball tryout game the other day. So, so thank you for that. And I do remember uh, when we had, the, when we commemorated the Orlando Pulse attack, and that was really, uh, it was a great turnout that day, as it is every year for the Garden State Equality Walk, for the Equality Walk. And I just want to say briefly why it's so important to be here today. Every day uh, when I'm in Washington, uh, there is uh, an effort, if you will, uh, to roll back uh, protections against, uh, to protect, I should say, the LGBT community, uh, the immigrant community, uh, whatever it is. Um, and it's only because people stand up, as you are today at the Equality Walk, and say that that's not acceptable, uh, that some of the rollbacks are not occurring. I know we've made great progress. You know, we could talk about getting rid of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, marriage equality, so many things that Garden State Equality has taken the lead on over the years. But the fact of the matter is that, that all of that is really in jeopardy. And just to give you two examples uh, very quickly, I think you know that just in the last couple of days, uh, the Department of Commerce had some policy on their website about you know, not discriminating based on sexual orientation. It was taken down, and then there was an outcry against it, and it went back up again, okay? Yeah. Some of you remember maybe a month ago, we worked very hard over the last few years to get um, to get uh, that you couldn't discriminate based on sexual orientation in federal contracts. Uh, President Obama did an executive order on that. When President Trump came in, he, he said, or there were rumors that he was going to repeal that. But it wasn't repealed because there was an outcry against him. And so that's what we face. I mean, there's no question that the atmosphere in Washington is such with the Trump administration and others that they would like to do a lot of rollback on a lot of equality issues. Because remember, we still don't have the Equality Act in place, so it's still possible to discriminate based on you know, employment discrimination. We need to pass the Equality Act so that that's not possible. But right now, right now, right now, unfortunately it is. So it's only because people agitate, people protest, people come out and do these walks that this administration feels that they can't do a lot of the bad things that they would probably like to do. And what happened with the Department of Commerce and what happened with federal contracts is certainly an example of that. So for Pride Month, uh, which I guess is going on for another week or two or so, it is really important this month and every day uh, to, to, to keep alert about what's happening, be vigilant, and push back, uh, whether you're writing a letter, you're protesting, whatever, against these efforts to roll back a lot of the gains uh, that, that we've made collectively over the years. So thanks so much. Thank you, Christian. One of our greatest allies in Congress, he's been, he comes to every single event we ask him to. You know, I don't want to say this because you might, you might, uh, don't, you don't want your other communities to know this, but I think he favors us over anyone else. <laughs> Quick little plug, if you are walking today and you're hungry after the walk, Vintage Subs on Cookman Avenue will donate $2 for every sub sold wow. to Garden State Equality. So if you're hungry, eat a sub and give us $2. <laughs> so she's been coming to this event for as many years as I can remember. Um, we're so happy to have her this year again, Lieutenant Governor Kim Gordano. Thank you everybody. I'm, I'm here today. I think this is the third walk. I'm not sure. I need you all to understand that we really do have one tent. And in New Jersey especially, our tent is very large. And we understand completely the challenges that you see. I said it on Tuesday night when I specifically included um, our obligation as public servants to protect those of every ethnic background, those with every financial background, every gender, and I specifically added the words sexual orientation on purpose because not on my watch. And 
I also believe that we have an obligation to pass that message on to our next generation. So I'm very proud to introduce to you my youngest son, Anderson Guadano, who is here today. And very embarrassed to be standing up here. As all 16 year olds would be. But I also add that he was here two weeks ago on his own with his friend for the Pride Walk. So some of us are raising him right. So good luck in the walk today. Be safe. I thank Chris and Garden State Equality for everything they do because you're absolutely right. My favorite congressman, he gave my son an appointment to the Air Force Academy, saving thousands of dollars. That's not the only reason why I like him. But you send a very loud message and you keep all public officials on their toes. And if you don't, then we don't know what will happen next. I said it to the Legal Aid Society last week. Keep up the fight, because there has to be a discussion. It has to be a thoughtful discussion, it has to be a respectful conversation, and it has to be conducted all the time. So be vigilant, thank you for having me. I especially thank my son, Anderson, for being here today. Thanks, everybody. Another important ally to us in the assembly, Assemblyman John Wisniewski is here. Christian, thank you so much, and thank each and every one of you. How do you like the shirt? So first of all, let me say thank you and acknowledge our Lieutenant Governor and Congressman Pallone and everybody else who's come out today. This is an important opportunity for us to all talk about how we stand together united as one community, as one people in the state of New Jersey. And I'm proud to have lent my voice over the past years in the General Assembly, being a sponsor of the Marriage Equality Act. And now, with Christian's advice and counsel, I've introduced legislation A4790, an equality license plate. And that equality license plate will not only, yes, let's hear it for the equality license plate. And, and Kim, if you're acting governor on that day, I hope you'd sign it, but an equality license plate that will help not only raise money, but raise awareness. Look, there's too much hate in the world today. We saw it in Alexandria. We've seen it in Florida. We've seen it across the country. It's gatherings like this that enable us to stand up and say that we will not let hate prevail, that we will let love prevail. And it is, through, it is through the outstanding work of organizations like Garden State Equality, with whom I am so proud to associate myself, that that message continues to be resounded through New Jersey. Keep up the fight, keep up the good work, and let's make sure that love trumps hate. Who here wants an equality license plate? So, real quick, I'm sorry for calling you out, but you guys are just too adorable. Will you come up here and show us your shirts? Look at these shirts. Come up here. Look at this. How cute is that? And they're holding hands the whole time. I'm like, up here. Like... Right. So, real quick, before we start walking, I want to thank all of you for being here today and for standing with our community every day for a fairer, more equal New Jersey. We are living in uncertain times. And during these times, we must remain focused. Recently in Philadelphia, they introduced a version of the pride flag with black and brown stripes. In an effort to shine light on communities of color within the LGBT community. Too often, the identity of being a person of color and LGBT is overlooked. And I would say, despite whatever your personal reaction to this change is, their goal was accomplished. Discussions around race and sexuality flooded social media. We are a stronger community when we have difficult conversations. But when those conversations turn into fighting and belittling, we are only weaker as a community. 
divide and, con uh, divide and conquer <coughs> strategy as old as time. Let us be a community that welcomes change and values differences. As an oppressed group, surely we understand the need to be recognized, to be seen, like those dogs. <laughs> we are stronger when we look out for one another, not look down at each other. Just because you disagree with someone doesn't mean you turn your back in disgust or embarrassment. We turn our hands towards them and reach out to understand. Chances are we've all had a hand at some point. It's time to extend yours. We are stronger when we stand united. So why are we here today? After marriage equality, many people said we have reached the mountaintop as a community. But that doesn't mean we have to forget about the valley below. We are walking for students to feel safer in schools. Walking for older adults to feel comfortable enough to live their fullest lives without needing to retreat back into the closet. We are walking because we will not allow health care to become inaccessible. We are walking because people in our community are struggling with drug addiction and there isn't enough care. We are walking for trans youth or who are beginning to feel free to be themselves. We are walking for a child in our community child in our community kicked out of their home because of who they love. That's why we're walking. We still have so much to do, but we walk knowing we stand on the shoulders of previous generations that struggled harder, sacrificed more, so we can enjoy these basic freedoms. Today, I walk knowing that a queer, strong woman of color serving as a law enforcement officer in D.C. saved the lives of people who would rather not see her married. We are a community that does good in this world. Let us not forget that as we walk today for a more equal society. Thank you. So we're about to start walking now. <laughs> this is this is very important. I just have a few housekeeping things. One is the Asbury Park Police Department has worked very closely with us to ensure that we, we remain safe today. You have to walk on the sidewalk. Okay? It's just as powerful, but you can't walk in the street. It's too dangerous. There's too many people driving up and down the streets. So we're gonna cross the street right here in the crosswalk. Please don't go up the street, come on. Um, I see some of you like looking at me like, I'm going in the street, like no, please just stay on the sidewalk. We're gonna cross the street right here. And we're gonna walk down to Convention Hall. There's gonna be a lot of us, so you can't get lost. We're gonna hit Convention Hall, and then we're gonna walk back here. It's great visibility. There's gonna be a lot of people down on the boardwalk. Then when we come back here, we're gonna talk about who is in the top 10 for individual fundraisers, who's in the top 10 for teams. We're gonna talk about who won those silent auction items. We're gonna talk about who wins the door prize. But for everyone who's in the top 10 of our fundraising right now, just know between here and walking to Convention Hall, donations might come in, so make sure you maintain your spot. Because I know, I know number one is about to slip to number two, so no. All right, so we're gonna begin walking and um, the Garden State Equality Board is gonna start walking and you can follow them and we're gonna go along the sidewalk. Thank you everyone for being here today.